Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now this next one we talk about transport proteins uh, this is very famous protein right this is very important right. So you can, everybody needs this protein right. So which, what is the protein involved in this uh, transport oxygen transport hemoglobin right. So here hemoglobin is present red blood cells right which efficiently carries oxygen from the lungs to the tissues of the body right. Then hemoglobin also helps in the transportation of carbon, carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions back to the lungs. So, this is the protein right hemoglobin has how many uh, subunits 4 subunits 2 alpha subunits and 2 beta subunits and the B subunits they contain a specific residue called the glutamic uh, acid right. So, this is structure of the hemoglobin B chain it looks like this. If there is a change in the nucleotide or the change of protein, the amino acid so this will affect this transport right for example here if you see this G A G right. So, G A C code for glutamic acid if it is converted to G T G right. So, A is trans changed to T right then it changed glutamic acid to valine. So, it changed to glutamic acid to valine. So, now just now we discussed about different characteristic features which type of amino acid is this glutamic acid charge negative charge right. So, but valine hydrophobic right. So, if you convert uh, mutate glutamic acid to valine what will happen change. you change right. So, now they form the hydrophobic environment. So, because due to the hydrophobic environment so this amino acid residue valine tries to interact with the other hydrophobic residues in the other chain right in the in their hydrophobic packet because of this interactions. So, it is not able to have the proper interaction. So, it tend to form fibrils right because of these fibrils right. So, they change the shape like the regular one into sickle. So, now this is a regular uh, shape and if you make the sickle cell so now this will block this transport of this oxygen. So, this is the one form the sickle cell anemia this is the disease mainly we found to many people in Africa right. So, now the this protein is very important for the carrier of the oxygen right. Now, there are other proteins called defense proteins so what are called different proteins antibodies. So, because we defend ourselves because we have to be uh, safe from the environment right from the bacteria or virus or all anything. So, like immunoglobulins right. So, this can recognize and precipitate or neutralize the invading bacteria or virus from the other species. Then there is another protein called a thrombin right this thrombin is also very important because it is a blood clotting protein right because when you got injured so it should be clotted right. So, this is the one which helps when we get injured so to prevent the loss of blood right in the vascular system right. Then there are some proteins they are acting as regulatory proteins right this regulates the cellular and physiological activity. For example, insulin right this is not a very well known example. So, it regulates the sugar metabolism. So, if you are uh, having diabetes so right you need to have insulin right. So, this is the one which regulates the cellular and physiological activity. And a lot of other proteins they are having different functions. One example is a monolin is a protein which is also used to be a sweetener right you see it is safe. But then also other proteins like nutrient proteins right this is the one usually people know if you talk about proteins that right, immediately they will tell about what are proteins means they will tell about the you can eat beans right. So, you will get out of lot of proteins right. So, there are various nutrient proteins like O albumin that is available in egg right like the egg white and the casein in milk and so on. So, there are various proteins they have different functions in living systems and we have the, these proteins for the proper function of our body right and all the cellular processes. Then if you have different types of structural important proteins right for this is called the contractile proteins or the motile proteins right. So, for example, this actin or the myosin they in the function the contractile system of the skeletal muscle right. Then are the structural proteins right which gives the strength and protection for example, keratin right in the and the uh, fibrous 
fibrous protein also the collagen right for example you can find this in hairs and fingernails right and the feathers right so you can see this this uh, proteins and these proteins they have some specific combination of amino acid residues like they have the combination of this hydroxy protein glycine and proline so but this the higher uh, count, uh, contribution of this protein so you can see the one third, third this is about the glycine and hydroxy proline as well as the proline so this will gives the uh, the elongated shape to this structural protein like the collagen or other protein keratin and so on fine then first we discussed about glomerular proteins and the fibrous proteins and the next step is the membrane proteins right as we discussed earlier membrane proteins are embedded into membranes so if you see they give two types of proteins okay here this is the membrane right so i have the membrane surface here here this is the membrane and these are the proteins which are embedded into membrane so this is the outside extracellular space and here this is the membrane right and these proteins are as we discussed earlier two types of proteins here this alpha here and this is beta right you can see this is a beta barrel conformation so these proteins also perform various functions like the transporters or receptors or channels and so on right just i will explain with this one with few examples right so here is one example for the transporters right what is a transporter generally which transports the molecules right so you can see the transporter is a membrane protein right which is involved in the movement of ions or small molecules or macromolecules right such as another protein also right across the biological membrane so this transports right mainly this transport right assist right the substance right mainly by the active transport right from the lower concentration to the higher concentration and for example multi drug reflex transporter oh, here is an example i give for the multi drug reflex uh, transport acrb right here how the transport happens okay here you can see the molecules right so here this is the inner membrane right here this is the periplasm and this is the outer membrane so here this is the protein involved in outer membrane is tall c right this tall c and here the inner membrane uh, this is the acrb right so if you have this substance here right so the substrate is here right you can see the substrate right so you cross the membrane and the during this transport this transmembrane helices like transmembrane helix 10 right these are the residues which are involved in the electrostatic interactions like the as 407 and lys 940 and as 408 right they are disturbed right they, these are the ion pairs are possible candidates for the translocation they are disturbed so the helix transmembrane helix 10 would change the conformation and goes here and due to the pumping mechanism this will be pulled out through the outer membrane to the outside so this is how they do the transport mechanism likewise there are various transporters which are known in the literature that they have different mechanisms to transport ions and the molecules across the membrane proteins right these are also membrane proteins for example ion channels right there are different types of ion channels right uh, potassium dependent ion channel chlorine dependent ion channel and so on and these proteins also they cross the membrane right selectively they will cross the membrane there are two properties for this transport so one is the selective ion conduction and the second one is gating so one is selective ions means this will select only some ions okay for example they select uh, potassium but not chlorine right likewise they have select some sort of selectivity so this will allow only to some ions and the second one is the gating gating means for some cases it will open the ch channel so it will allow to pass through and some cases it will close the channel so in this case nobody can the molecules they cannot enter into this channel right okay so if you see this example so this is the example for the closed and open conformation so here if you see the molecule is here the ion is here they want to transport through this membrane right and here if you see this is glutamic acid 148 this 148 is here inside the membrane so in this case it blocks the transport right now it change the conformation and here this e148 moves away from the membrane to outside now the path is open and now this ion can pass through this membrane right this is the in this is out so here it is blocked and here uh, this you have the space so it can go right so there are two different uh, aspects 
one is the selective ion conduction they will allow to pass only specific ions and the second one is the gating so it has open and closed conformation right change the conformation to allow to pass through into the membrane right okay this is another example got olfactory receptors right so olfaction is one of the senses involved in the perception of chemo signals right so how to get these olfactions it is and smell right so if you see the malaria so it is one of the major causes because the mosquitoes can recognize human right this is why mosquitoes bite and then cause the malaria if mosquitoes cannot get this olfaction cannot recognize human then we do not have any problem right right so now they try to understand whether this mosquitoes antenna contains some of the olfactory receptors right? so they take the electrophysiology uh, experiments they try to see the olfactory receptors in the antenna they found most of this they have this receptors this is how they recognize the human right also instead of in the morning time if you compare the evening time it can easily recognize human this way we have lot of mosquito bites in the evening right so now there are several research going on to understand the olfactory receptors mainly in the gpcrs see there are several methods they have developed to identify these receptors and see how the mosquitoes recognize this type of receptors and what is the correspondence between the proteins in the mosquitoes and the proteins in the human and see how what is the correspondence between these two to understand the uh, olfactory receptors and address the issue of malaria so now if we look into these functions right there are various functions we described can you remember some of these functions till we discuss till now antibodies structural proteins enzymes transporters regulatory proteins receptors transporters right channels so we discuss various functions right and the functions of these proteins mainly depends on the structure right structure means i can say okay here i can show one of the structures right how a structure looks like this will help to detect the function for example i discussed about the enzymes so the active sites so if you look into the structure the active sites are not located inside the structure right because inside the structure it is completely compact right so you can see where you can see the probable active sites so that the ligand molecules can enter and interact or any other uh, molecule can go and interact so we go the structure if you see this one you can see a kind of packet here right so if you have the different structures right now from these structures we can understand the probable active sites and where the ligand can interact as well as the inhibit the activity right currently we know that we have suffered with various type of new diseases right right cancer and hiv and you can see the chikungunya dengue and all right so all these diseases they are targeted by some of the specific targets proteins right so when you try to design inhibitors they like to have the structures because the function is dictated mainly by the structure right so in different levels so this as i explained earlier so in the game as a case of the hemoglobin right the glutamic acid 6 is uh, mutated to valine so it causes the sickle cell anemia likewise a small change in the hormones like the leucine to arginine it causes high blood pressure like in the case of several proteins like the insulin right some changes cause the diabetes and like the p53 you can see right so here small changes right it causes which disease cancer right so if you understand the functions and if you understand the cause for the different diseases it is important to know about the structure right so if i say one example okay this is the p53 right so you can see your protein is here and you can see dna here this is dna here you can see the protein okay so dna binding protein right so the mutations in the p53 so if you make small changes mainly the replacement of arginines right it causes human cancer so now how to how to understand what why these specific mutations cause cancer what is the relationship between this function as well as from the structure right so in this case we need to get the structural information because the structures are known so you can see the proteins right uh, this is a dna and you can see the sites where the proteins can interact 
Okay, we see the DNA side. You can see here the region where the proteins can interact with the DNA, right? So when you mutate these amino acid residues, which are binding with the DNA, and see how their activity changes, or how they decrease or increase the binding free energy, or the binding specificity. So whether you see the DNA binding with the proteins, and this will help you to understand how the specific mutation or the structure is important to understand the binding specificity of this protein DNA binding complexes as well as how this will affect to the disease for example in the case of cancer. So likewise they try to get the features they try to understand the molecular mechanism or the basis of the diseases based on the structures. So to understand the function it is essential to know about the structures and this is the reason why it is much emphasis have been given to understand different structures. So when you look into the protein structures, right? So there are various levels of protein structures, right? So primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure, and the quaternary structure. Just I will uh, mention these names, and we will discuss the details in the next class, right? So what is the primary structure? Primary structure deals with the combination of amino acid residues. So we can get the combination of amino acid. Okay, first residue is methionine, second residue is isolation, third residue is lysine, right? So you can get this information and go to the next level, right? Here you can see the arrangement of these residues, right? Here this is the just the amino acid sequence, right? And when how these residues are arranged, right? So this will give you the next level of information. So this is why they call it secondary structure. So here if you see they are kind of a helical shape, like a spiral shape. So this is why they call this as helix. Right, and then the second one you can see there is the kind of a ladder, right? So this is a kind of a ladder. So in this case they put this is a strand. So first letter is Greek is alpha, so they mention helix is alpha helix, and the second letter is beta, so they put beta sheet, right? This is secondary level, and then go to the tertiary level. So if you see the secondary level and tertiary level, you can get more information. Right? Here exactly how your product looks like how the residues or the atoms are arranged in a 3D structure. So you get the complete picture of all the atoms when in the case of the coordinates like x, y, z coordinates, right. This will give you a tertiary structure. Then we go one step further. So several tertiary structures, they form subunits. They collect, collectively form the quaternary structures, right. So if you see this is one chain, this is another chain, right. The biologically, they perform the functions. Once they form these oligomers. If it is one, it is monomer. If it is more than one chain, we call this as oligomer, right? So here you can see the two molecules, right? They are called a dimer, right? So they are very important for the function, right? So this type of structure, this assembled subunits, they are called quaternary structures, right? So in the next class, we will discuss more about the primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure, and coordinate structures, and what are the information we gain from the primary structure or secondary structure or tertiary structure and how this information will be transferred to understand the mechanism as well as to understand the function, fine. Thanks for your attention.